Hey, hey, so I'm back from the store. I picked up some wigs that have some subtle and obvious differences that are really important to pay attention to if you plan on wearing them. In this video, I'm gonna go over vital tips that can help you avoid common setbacks when using wigs to retain length. As I mentioned in a prior video on braids, you should follow a healthy hair regimen when your hair is out, as well as when your hair is in braids or a wig. Paying more attention to your real hair is a must for achieving your goals. So the ideology of neglecting your hair and expecting results is a false one. Luckily, the proper use of wigs is a great and easier alternative. It's versatile and doesn't require as much of a commitment as other options. Always wash and prep your wig before use. To be honest, the majority of the wig and hair extension industry is pretty messed up. Most of the wigs you wear are sprayed with pesticides to prevent and kill bugs, lice, and fleas. And this step of the manufacturing process is usually done in another country with lax sanitation laws. Make sure you wash your wig with at least lukewarm water with any random SLS sulfate shampoo. Rinse it thoroughly and let it air dry. There's tons of great videos on YouTube that show how to wash and condition a wig. It's best to select a wig that blends easily with your real hair. Most of the damage many wig wearers experience doesn't really come from the actual wig. It comes from your efforts in trying to blend your natural hair with the texture of the wig. Trying to blend something that looks like this to something that looks like that will definitely cause some damage. Wigs appear harmless when you see them on those bald, perfect head-shaped mannequins. But when you flip them over, you see an intricate piece of hard mesh. This coming into contact with your hair can cause a lot of breakage and cuticle damage. So you use a wig cap, but the problem with wig caps is that they can be too tight and the material soaks up moisture which can really be problematic to your edges. A solution I recommend is to use a satin scarf instead but rather than wearing it, sew it directly on the wig like this. Your hair underneath should not be wet or damp, but it should be moisturized and in a style that restricts it from movement, like single braids or twists or loose cone rolls or braids. I personally prefer cone rolls or braids because less of your ends are exposed. If you prefer the more natural look and want to leave some hair out, it's safe on your edges to use a half wig with a similar texture as your own hair. I don't recommend wearing wigs consistently every day, especially if your days are long. Over time, this dependency will cause the hair that does grow out to grow out thinner and weaker. If you must wear them every day, at least take them off at night before you go to bed and schedule break days like on the weekends. The wig itself is like a hat and it restricts air from circulating to your scalp. And your added efforts of protecting your hair strands makes it even worse. It's easier to see the effects of this prolonged exposure to this type of environment on skin that's thinner than skin on your scalp. I've used this band-aid as a way to recreate a similar dark and moist environment. I've had it on for about 8 hours. This should look familiar to you. The skin underneath is extremely pale, inflamed, and mushy. Remember, your skin is a live organ. To me, it's the most important organ because it shows you what's going on inside your body. You don't notice this, but your skin is very involved with the atmosphere. It soaks in air around you and uses the oxygen to assist in the natural process of generating and shedding cells. This process is called oxidation. Your skin also uses nutrients from the sun, which gives your skin that bright I'm alive color and strengthens your hair follicles to produce thicker hair. When you interrupt transfer of oxygen to your skin, a couple of things happen. First, your dead skin cells accumulate in the moist environment. The skin becomes irritated and inflamed, and your skin loses its bright luster and becomes pale. Over time, your hair follicles will weaken and your hair will grow out thinner. 
So try not to develop a dependency to wigs and take breaks. As I mentioned earlier, the use of wigs can be a safe and effective tool to assist you in reaching your hair goals, but a dependency can really set you back, so have an exit plan. As with braids, wigs are not meant to be worn consistently for a long period of time. So, for example, you can plan to wear wigs three to four times a week in the winter months or only on weekends. Unless you have some sort of medical condition, apart from style, of course, your goal should be to use wigs to get you to a certain point and then no longer need them. So use all the information you learned from this video to approach this with a plan. I hope you enjoyed this video and most importantly, I hope you learned something new and helpful. As always, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.